British Columbia is world-renowned for its natural beauty, diverse communities, and thriving culture. It's also known for being in the grips of a housing affordability crisis decades in the making, which has been compounded by a poison drug crisis and by the COVID-19 pandemic. The province has an ambitious plan to address the crisis through the largest investment in housing affordability in BC's history. Tasked with building tens of thousands of homes in hundreds of communities is BC Housing, the province's agency responsible for developing, managing, and administering a wide range of subsidized housing and homelessness services across the province. BC Housing doesn't do this alone. To address the challenge, they're working with hundreds of partners. In this podcast, you'll get to hear from those delivering innovative and exciting affordable housing solutions. I'm Sarah from BC Housing, and this is Let's Talk Housing. Over history, Sumiquela, formerly known as the Riverview Lands, has been many things to many people. For 100 years, it has been known as the site of a mental health hospital. But before the site became Riverview Hospital, it was used by the Quiquitlam people for food, medicine, safety, ceremony, and shelter, and they never ceded their rights to it. BC Housing and Quiquitlam First Nation will work together, government to government, to decide a future for the lands. This will be no easy task. Before we begin today, I'd like to acknowledge that we are recording this entire podcast on the ancestral homelands of hundreds of Indigenous people and nations, each with their own unique traditions and history. Today, I am on the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, who have been the caretakers of this land for hundreds and thousands of years. We offer our respect to their peoples, past and present. Full transparency, we are recording this episode in October 2021 and it reflects the issues at that time. Today on Let's Talk Housing, we are joined by Carol De Paoli, Director of Land Development, Simi Quayala at BC Housing. Carol leads the team that is working with partners to develop a comprehensive community plan that has the principles of truth and reconciliation as its foundation. We are also joined by Chief Ed Hall of the Quiquitlam, the First Nation whose traditional territory includes Simi Quayala. Chief Hall, welcome to the podcast. Can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you, Sarah, and very nice to meet you. And uh, I am uh, the elected uh, leader of the Quiquilum people, and I will give myself an introduction uh, in uh, our endangered hunk- uh, Hunkaminum language that uh, has been around for thousands of years and is uh, spoken by very few nowadays. Good day, how are you all? Skapalem is my traditional name, Ed Hall is my English given name, and I am from the, the land of uh, Quiquitlam people. And um, the, uh, the, the, the things that I, the, about myself is, uh, you know, I'm actually from there from my maternal side. My mother was actually born right there at the river. And uh, back then, in those earlier times, there home births were a very common thing. And uh, so I'm the eldest of uh, the four boys that she had. And, um, you know, I didn't really grow up in the area. I lived in uh, Mission City and, uh, and I've lived, uh, you know, interprovincially. And I lived on Vancouver Island uh, for a few years. And uh, I pretty much settled uh, within the area now. And, um, it's uh it's it's something uh, that i that has been instilled into me is uh all you know, this uh, leadership uh abilities uh, by all of the teachings that have been uh, shared over to me i uh, i come from a line of leadership from uh my father's side uh, i have an uncle over there who's a grand chief out in scowlitz uh just out in harrison bay and um yeah, other than uh, that, uh, you know, I've done a lot of other kinds of work and uh, and i've done post secondary education which has helped me uh get into the leadership capabilities and uh, I can uh, try to uh, move the nation along forward in a good way and uh, build relations and partnerships along the way uh, with a lot of these uh, teachings that I've had over the years. Thank you for that. And um, you mentioned the river, right? The river runs right by Um well, Can you describe for our listeners who haven't, who have never been to that area, what, what the lands look like and um, maybe tell us a little bit about 
uh, the Coquitlam's relationship with those lands. The river uh, that I speak of uh, running past there is the Coquitlam River, Quiquaclum. Uh, it's uh, in, in our language of Halkamalum, uh, Hunkaminum dialect, uh, it's, uh, it's called Stalo. And a lot of people's understanding of uh, the wording Stalo is actually an area by Chilliwack and a collective of nations, eh? but it's, it's really just uh, a translation for the word river. And uh, not all words in English uh, will get translated to the Halkamalum and, and dialects. And uh, it uh, runs through there, goes through very slow. It, um, it, it used to have just vast amounts of fish, uh, you know, once upon a time over 100 years ago. And uh, the BC Hydro Electric Dam uh, got put in, and um, so that uh, really slowed the flow down. It is uh, it's heavily silted nowadays now, but it's still a beautiful place to to be to take a stroll, uh, walk a dog, ride a bicycle, and that. And um, it goes through a uh, pass between uh, Colony Farms and Wilson Farms. Wilson Farms is adjacent to it over at the uh, Shaughnessy Street on the Port Coquitlam side, and uh, we've had. Uh, uh, a village uh, life around there for like just centuries and uh, you know there in, in uh, Smeekwella and then also the upper ridge reaches uh, to the lake Coquitlam Lake is uh, definitely have some ancient sites up, up there and uh, you know, it it really uh, hosted us for you know like a, a vast amount of activities uh, some of them are already mentioned uh, earlier on in your introduction there and uh, it uh, yeah really has uh, been wanting us to connect back with it because uh you know we're trying to uh you know, rebuild our it, our um culture uh programs uh you know and language is a part of one uh because i've uh, been involved in that uh, for about six years now uh, language revitalization and there's also uh, other kinds of activity that uh, that we're doing uh, we try to uh, harvest uh, seasonally uh, different little items uh, that grow you know, just uh, uh, picking uh, things uh, that you can make a different kind of tea with, uh, just uh, old ancient medicines, uh, you know, that uh, we don't have to go to a pharmacy to get. You know, we could just uh, you know, use our teachings and go harvest that. We also uh, like to harvest cedar bark uh, strips off of uh, the trees where, where we can have that arranged, uh, like we have right in Coquitlam already with the, the, the city leadership there. And... Uh, We've done it up at the uh, Coquitlam Lake too. So the area is really just uh, has us uh, uh, busy with these kinds of things and we're trying to implement uh, a little bit more as uh, for each season there so that we're always continually uh, busy with, uh, you know, some of our old uh, traditional ways that uh, have been around for a long time. And uh, this, some of it just seems to have just been sort of lost or just in hiatus for a while and it's starting to come back. That's a really great introduction um, to the to these lands and the importance of these lands. Carol, I'd like to bring you in here. Um, why is BC Housing involved? What's the history behind BC Housing's involvement with Samiquiela? So BC Housing is responsible currently for the maintenance and operation of the site. It It is a large site, 244 acres. There are 69 buildings on site. Uh, 52 of those are occupied. All the infrastructure that runs through the site is privately owned and managed. So um, BC Housing is responsible for that as well. Road clearing and any repairs that are required to any of the uh, storm waters or um, sewer systems um, comes under the purvey of, of BC Housing's management. Um, so, so in addition to managing the lands, BC Housing was also brought in um, at the time when the province... Um, wanted to explore what a future might look like for the site and understanding, of course, uh, Quiquetlam First Nations close connection to the lands. This, These are their core traditional and unceded territory. Um, BC Housing was brought in um, based on experience working with First Nations communities and experience with complex uh, projects. Um, there are many layers to, to Samiqua'ala historically as well as presently and trying to understand all of those and, and, and understand how or what a next evolution of the lands may look like um, is, is a complex and comprehensive process. So uh, BC Housing was brought in um, to help guide that process and during that, um, you know, obviously work very close with Quiquetlam First Nation. And in fact, we have now signed a partnership agreement 
with Quiquetlam to um, to um, uh, create a comprehensive community plan for the lands together. And this partnership agreement has been um, a key milestone in ensuring that uh, Quiquitlam has uh, equal authority decision making in respect to a final comprehensive community plan for the land. So side by side partners at the table. Chief Hall, Carol has talked about the partnership approach to developing a comprehensive community plan. What does a partnership mean for the Coquitlam First Nation? It's more or less about uh, forming, uh, you know, one fairly large team, I guess, uh, from you know, uh, from both sides, uh, I do know quite a bit about the site, uh, but how do you uh, in, navigate through all of that? Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely going to take a lot of years, and it's, it's probably going to be uh, you know a, a changing of personnel throughout the years, probably on both sides too. So it, it's something uh, that'll be ongoing for I don't know how long, but I would have to say several years, and uh, it's just uh, just working together to to get through it to reach a common goal. So, Carol, we're in the comprehensive community plan phase of the redevelopment. Can you tell us what will be happening at Simicuela over the next couple of years? Great question, Sarah. And and I agree with Chief Hall. This is going to be a, a, t- a lengthy process. Um, so uh, we, Quiquetlam First Nation and BC Housing are, are currently in the comprehensive community plan phase for for the redevelopment of the lands. Um, And and within that phase, actually, there are many stages. So within the the comprehensive community planning phase itself, we are currently in the what we're calling the ideas generation stage. And this stage of the process, um, we as the project team, which is comprised of Quiquetlam First Nation and NBC Housing, um, we're taking principles that were established during an earlier phase called visioning, and visioning concluded in 2015. Uh, those principles have been refined, but what we're doing in this idea generation stage is working with the Quiquetlam community, our partners, stakeholders, members of the public, to understand how these principles translate into a design approach for a comprehensive community plan. For example, um, one of the principles is engage with the site's pre and post contact heritage. So that's a principle. What does that actually mean for a redevelopment plan? How does that affect the land use? How does that affect cultural amenities? So we're really in an ideas generation stage to work together with with everyone who, who has an interest and a commitment to the lands to understand how does that inform the design approach we'll take? Um, and then once we 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 are in this stage, we expect it will continue until mid next year. Um, we've been we we launched this stage in March of 2021, so it it is a lengthy process, about 12 months. Uh, once we have a design approach, we then move into concept creation. And this is another iter- iterative process similar to um, the ideas generation stage where, where we work again with the Coquitlam community, our partners, stakeholders, the general public to, to see um, how these design approaches guide the creation of an actual plan. So these concept plans Will, will be the foundation of an eventual comprehensive community plan, which is the outcome of this planning process. And the comprehensive community plan will be a realistic redevelopment plan for the lands. And, and this is a, a, a also a very complex um, stage of the process, because within this plan, we need to address a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of aspects. For example, this plan will include what are future land uses we want to see on site. We know there's some health care there currently. Will there be more health care? Will there be housing? Um, will there be retail? In addition to that, what are the densities asso- associated with each land use? Building heights, building form will need to be confirmed. 
open spaces. Um, there's a lot of uh, open space on the site. There's a lot of very um, uh, important trees to various members of the community, as well as um, Indigenous species that are important to Quiquetlam. How do we incorporate open spaces such as parks or gardens, ecological areas? Um, we'll need a heritage strategy to address um, archaeolo archaeological sites that are on site, as well as architectural heritage. But also, how do we express Quiquetlam's culture and history? Um, their, their, their history is, is oral. And so we, how do we bring that onto the site? So we'll have to consider that as well. And then a lot of the um, sort of logistics of, of, of trying to develop a large parcel of land what is a transportation strategy? The plan will have to work to outline cycling, pedestrian, transit, vehicular connections, um, both within the site and those connections regionally to surrounding neighborhoods, as well civil infrastructure. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the infrastructure is currently privately owned and managed. So, and many of the utilities on site date to the opening of the hospital. So they're about 100 years old. They're, they're obsolete and they're in poor condition and they cannot support modern facilities and uses. So we'll have to create a servicing plan. And, and, and as well with any larger um, uh, major redevelopment, what are those community and cultural amenities um, that can be incorporated into the plan, cultural spaces, artwork? You know, we've started with some of those working together with Quiquetlam First Nation to bring some of their culture um, more visible onto the lands and the hardscaping we're doing by incorporating basket, traditional basket weave patterns in sidewalks and um, uh, pedestrian crosswalks. So we're, we're bringing those traditional patterns and colors back. But what is a larger strategy for that for the entire site? And, you know, it's not as glamorous, but we also need to understand the financial aspect of what this redevelopment plan um, might entail. What are the costs associated with it? Are there revenues associated with it? And what are the funding needs? And, and this is an iterative process where we will, we will, you know, make, you know, start with the feedback we received, go back to all the, you know, Quiquetlam community, to the public, to our partners, to stakeholders, get their feedback, and then constantly refine the plan until we have a redevelopment plan that is supported by Quiquetlam as well as the province. And, and once we then have an approved plan, th th at that stage, we're able to take it through the municipal approval process with the city of Coquitlam. And so that process is, you know, a, a one to two year uh, endeavor. So as Chief Hall mentioned, yeah, years lengthy, <laughs> but it takes time to work through the multiple layers that are associated with this site. And it's important that we have the time to listen um, and, 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 and brainstorm how we can, you know, create the best plan with what we have. So Chief Hall, I'd like to bring you in here. One of the things that Carol mentioned was the importance of bringing the Quiquitlam's presence back into Simicuela. Can you talk a little bit about how the Quiquitlam are restoring their relationship with Simicuela after having been removed from those lands by the by the colonial government? We have actually been uh, working together to uh, have come up with uh, you know artists and installations uh, to be uh, you know present on various parts of the site, including the new uh, building facilities that are going to be helping. Uh, you know, uh, with people uh, that are on their uh, mental health and wellness journeys. And uh, so we've been uh, engaging with the community on, on those kinds of things. Also, the, the place names, uh, you know, that, that are being put up on signage uh, inside and outside of uh, the buildings, not the roadways and everything there. And uh, we've also um, are still seeking ideas on uh, other kinds of uh, art uh, installations that we can have uh, throughout the site, uh, some ideas have been going back as far as uh, six, five, six years ago when the when the visualization process was starting back then in 2015, and um, so it's uh, 
it's all about getting the, the community involved and uh, seeing what's working for everybody. Thank you. So, Carol, one of the things that we discussed briefly earlier was the role of the site for mental health and addictions. Can you talk a little bit about the role that Sumiquela plays in the province's mental health and addiction strategy and the partnerships that BC Housing has with health? Yes, certainly, Sarah. Um, so while Riverview Hospital closed in 2012, uh, officially and formally, healthcare has continued to be delivered on site. And currently, there are 289 beds on site that are operated um, uh, through government partners, nonprofits. And these facilities, uh, some of these facilities tend to be um, some of the more acute treatment facilities for mental health and addictions in the province. And they are um, provincially serving as well as regionally serving. Um, so announced during the visioning stage in 2015 was the relocation of two facilities from a site in Burnaby to Samiqua'ala. One of those is the Healing Spirit House, which was named by the Quiquetlam community. Just recently, very recently, um, the Redfish Healing Center, also um, named by the Quiquetlam community, just started welcoming patients uh, in October of this year. And this is a 105-bed facility. It provides services for adults with concurrent mental health and addictions disorders. And in addition to these two new facilities, which um, when they, they uh, were relocated to site, we did have to do a significant amount of um, investment into the infrastructure because, as I mentioned previously, a um, hundred year old infrastructure could not support the the needs and and demands that these these modern facilities require. But in addition to those two facilities, there are a handful of other programs that are operated on site through um, provincial health services authority, as well as through Fraser Health and nonprofit partners. And these include um, beds for um, addiction and substance use recovery, as well as transitional. Um, uh, transitional housing for folks that have mental health issues um, that are coming through the justice system. What's interesting to note about the new um, facilities that we're seeing on site is that they um, there's they represent a, a philosophical change in the delivery of mental health. Um, many of the original buildings that stand on site are from the hospital time. Um, and, and when you compare the, uh, the layout and the programming in the new facilities compared to how the, the buildings were constructed in the early 1900s, you can really see that the approach to the treatment um, of mental health has changed. Um, these these buildings provide um, care in smaller settings. They're more intimate. Um, there's greater autonomy and privacy for patients. So it it really is an interesting perspective going through the lands to see how the delivery um, and perceptions of mental illness have really changed in the last hundred years. And um, you know we're we're excited that. Um, that these folks are able to call Samiqua Ala home for at least a period of time. And, and we hope that a future Samiqua Ala will, will really meet the needs of these, uh, the, these, these, these folks in this community. So Chief Hall, I'm hoping you can help us conclude here. When you think about the partnership between the Quiquitlam and BC Housing, what do you think the lessons are for other governments that are considering a similar approach? That's a very good one. Uh, the, the, my view on that would be to is to be able to form a relation, a working relation, and to be able to be open to other ideas, whether they're you know coming from uh, you know like within Quiquitlam, for example, in this conversation, and uh, with BC Housing. Uh, so uh, it, it'll go a long way in being able to you know, move forward together uh, on on projects uh, that are uh, massive like that, uh, and will take a long time to to get to a completion. Uh, you know, whatever that might look like, 
but it, it's it's all about the, those uh, those steps along the way and um, working together with it. Thank you, Chief Hall. Thank you, Carol DePaoli, for joining us on Let's Talk Housing today. This has been a really important conversation about land development based on reconciliation. Let's talk again soon. To learn how to apply for subsidized housing in British Columbia, visit our website, bchousing.org. You can also call us at 1-800-257-7756. That's 1-800-257-7756.